gentiles <coughs> you get it they were gentiles so jonah's preaching resulted in gentiles responding how did they respond large numbers huh with sackcloth with sackcloth and many other things no it was genuine repentance okay and it was not one or two handful of people but the entire population turned to render their ways and turn to him okay our lord was using the example of jonah to indicate that when he dies he is buried he rises from the dead what will happen there will be a big salvation experience among the gentiles okay that is why if you read that was he, he says the men of nineveh will rise and accuse this generation because when they heard jonah preach they repented and someone greater than jonah is here and this generation this people around them will not whereas far away we all are like that no we didn't know god but we came to know him because of what we heard we break bread every sunday okay to remind ourselves of what jesus did for us you know so in the life of jonah is enshrined the truth that will take place about jesus as death and burial did jonah die actually here in this yes ha later he died this tomb is still there this tomb is still there anyone disagrees with linson in this incident for chapter 1 2 3 4 the tomb is after this four chapters were written okay did jonah die in this book no consensus ha huh? yes or no we'll come to that i have a different view okay we will come to that but just before we come to that i'll just leave a thought if jonah didn't die why would jesus use it to signify that he will die and he will rise as jonah was in the belly of the fish not whale huh? children's books mein bada whales ka drawing rahega bible tells not fish we have reduced jonah's life to a story we like it because it's like a story सैरी टेल्स हम लोग पढ़ते हैं ना छोटा है तभी तो पढ़ने के लिए सुनने के लिए अच्छा लगता है सो मेनी थिंग्स अबाउट जोना इज लाइक दैट सैरी टेल्स नो इट्स ओनली इन द इमेजिनेशन सो वी आल्सो एंड अप थिंकिंग लाइक दैट यू नो वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट वेल्स दैट इज देयर द लार्जेस्ट क्रिएचर यू नो व्हाट इट इज fishes bolte hain plankton where did you read you saw in youtube plankton is microscopic creatures is right ha huh? is not wrong is right the largest creature living on the earth actually eats microscopic organisms it cannot swallow not all whales huh? but that particular whale which is the largest okay coming back to jona vincent mentioned about his tomb okay jona is a historical figure his tomb was there in iraq okay mosul that is the name of the place the ruins of nineveh are still there for us to see the ruins of jonah's tomb is also there okay 
His tomb was destroyed by ISIS very recently. Okay, uh, uh, it was destroyed in 2014. All of you were alive, watching news. You would have seen, but never thought that it was the Jonah of our Bible. Okay. So this is not a story that we are studying. Okay, it is not fancy things. Jo achha lagta hai, but real story. Okay, real events. The book starts with. We will. What we we'll do? We will do is uh, we will take a look at the uh, a summary of this book first. We will see. The book divides into two parts. Four chapters hai. Do baag mein batwara kar sa sakta hai. Okay. First part is chapter 1 and 2. Second part is chapter 3 and 4. First part deals with his first call. Okay? God tells Jonah, go and preach. So that is the first part. What does he do in the first part? Chapter 1 and 2, mein, he disobeys. He turns a deaf ear to what God is telling. He runs away from God. Okay? God brings a storm. And people cast lots. Okay? And the lot is bang, right? <laughs> it points to him. And then he confesses. He tells, throw me into the water. They throw him. And when he makes contact with the water, the calm in the ocean terrifies everyone else. Okay? And the whole ship, the sailors, they start making offerings and sacrifices to the God of Jonah. Okay, they are changed. They are transformed. Okay, in those days, the shipping vessels were mostly Phoenician. You know, that is what we call Lebanon today. Tyre, Sidon, Phoenicia, the nation. They were powerful seafaring people. They were brought to the knees by the Greeks. Okay, so in all probability, this ship would have been a Phoenician ship in which he was traveling. Okay? So they came to know the Lord. In the second part, another powerful people who are rising in the horizon, no? the Assyrians, they came to know the Lord. So the gospel has always been going to people who are not part of Israel and its What to say to a part of that covenant. Gospel has always gone. Jonah, the book of Jonah itself is symbolic or it brings that point to the fore that God was working among the Gentiles and bringing them to himself. Jonah was reluctant but God initiated it. Okay, in this book you will find God tells Jonah go. No. Okay. In the book of Romans, we read, no? how can people hear. believe if they don't hear? Okay? How can they hear unless somebody preaches to them? How can somebody preach unless they are sent? Okay? So this book brings out that aspect of God sending. God sends people to every people of the earth. His witness. Okay? And so that people can know him. Throughout generations he has been doing that. Okay? But like Jonah, very often the believers are reluctant. But our reluctance, our failure will not stop the spread of the gospel. That is why you find, you know, even today so much testimonies of the Lord actually appearing to people in visions and dreams. And no Christian around them, but they know the Lord. Then they get assembled into fellowships as God leads others to Him. God is not tied down and dependent on us. He will do His work, whether or not you like it. Okay? Instead of going to Nineveh, 
where did Jonah go? Where Linson mentioned Tarshish. Okay. You have seen Israel, no more or less India ka shape here. Long, triangular, bottom country. Okay. Nineveh is on the right side if you look at a map. Okay, I didn't get time to make slides, otherwise you could have seen it. Right side. Okay. In the Mesopotamian region. Okay, that is a place from where uh, Abraham originated. Iran, Iraq, that belt. Nineveh is there. It's a land route. Okay. 500 miles. Tarshish, you can't go by land. It's only accessible by sea. It's 2,500 miles from where Kona was. The easier thing would have been to go by land. Just 500 miles. But Jonah opted for the more interesting journey of 2,500 miles in water to go to where he could stay away from what God wanted him to do. He knew very clearly God was telling him to go. Do we know clearly what God wants us to do? What? What he has shown? Yeah. But this go, is is there a message for us also? With, starting with the same word go. Go is there for. There is no difference from the message that Jonah got and the message you and I are having. We are sitting on a time bomb. If we are doing nothing about it. Okay. Jonah is for us to understand. Don't take God's word. It's not for us to again memorize Matthew 28, 19 to 20 and be able to rata it in front of Sabke Samne Rataneka. That is not what God wants. Now God wants us to do what He wants us to do when He has told go. Okay? So how many people like Jonah were in Nineveh? How many people like Jonah? And reason for asking. Like Jonah means who was Jonah? A Hebrew. Who was Jonah? A worshipper of God, the living God. Who was Jonah? He liked to be in the community of others who are like him. In Nineveh, how many were like him? Probably no one. You understand? The Bible characters are presented as they were. There is no sugar coating. There is no paint applied to them. So you can see them as they are. And you can see you yourself as you are in the light of God's word. And see that you are doing nothing. It is tragic when they say it was okay in Jonah's time, it is okay in Abraham's time. If you look at those characters, there was nothing okay for them. But they made choices in their life because of which they were different from their contemporaries. Okay? We like to be like this, no? Gathering together, believer to believer, you know, and being together, it's nice to be in the midst of God's people. But God doesn't want us to be there. I read one book, Rebecca Pippard, you know, Out of the Salt Shaker. Guess what it means? Out of the Salt Shaker means? You know what is a salt shaker? Yeah. That is called a salt shaker. Meaning out of the salt shaker. Salt has no value when salt is sticking to salt and sticking to other salt and other salt and other salt. No, pura dabbe ke andar salt is salt. But God wants you to get out of it and be with the people. 
सो वेन खाना में भी एक चम्मच एक ही जगह पे डाल के खाने को देखेगा तो हाउ हॉरेबल इट इज सो सॉल्ट कैन नॉट बी टूगेदर सॉल्ट इज अ फ्लेवर दैट इज ओनली गुड वेन इट इज स्प्रेड आउट ओके सो वेन गॉड एज पुट यू इन योर ऑफिस और इन योर बिल्डिंग एंड देर इज नो अदर बिलीवर कैसा लगता है Just like Jonah would have felt, but that is just like God wants it to be. Salt is a flavor only when it is just enough, and you are just enough for your office. You are just enough for your neighborhood. You are just enough for everyone you come in contact with. साथ में brother P T Vargas को भी लेके जाने का. को भी लेके जाने का डोंट इमेजिन दैट वे सॉल्ट इज गुड ओनली व्हेन इट इज अलोन एंड इट शुड डू इट्स जॉब ओके वेर एवर सॉल्ट मे बी इन डीपीएस इन डिवाइन चाइल्ड स्कूल और वाइल टेकिंग पीपल टू शो हाउसेस है ना नमक साथ में जा रहा है उनके साथ ऐसा समझ लेने का ओके okay? The word go is very interesting. Sometimes our English Bible में ना उतना मजा नहीं आता है. As you will, that is why I keep telling you try to look at the word because every language has deficiencies. The Hebrew language was very rich actually. English reduces that richness because many things are described in one word. English में हम uncle बोलेंगे, but Tamil में elder brother के लिए अलग वर्ड रहेगा यंगर ब्रदर रहेगा तो अलग रहेगा यू नो सो सेम वर्ड इज नॉट यूज फॉर अंकल फॉर एवरीथिंग सो मेनी थिंग्स आर रिड्यूस बट वी आर ओनली फेमिलियर विद दिस द वर्ड गो कम्स फ्रॉम द वर्ड हलाक इन यू टू हलाक ओके हलाक मींस रन व्हाट इज व्हाट डज हलाक मीन नॉट हलाल हलाक इट मींस रन So what does it show? Urgency in God's heart. क्या बैठ रहा है? उठो, जाओ, and spend time there. Okay. And preach against it. You know the translation is very weak. The word preach comes from the word para. U a r a para. You can use u for. Helping you with the pronunciation. You know what it means. Para means what I'm doing. Accosting, holding, and taking his personal attention. Just a pocket of Linson dar gaya, है ना? तो वो सुनेगा मेरा, भाई जो भी बोलेगा. किधर जाता है पूछा तो किधर जाता है बोलेगा. Okay. So what God is telling, the word preach gives the feeling. दर्दी जमा करके एक ऑडिटोरियम में भाषण देने का गेट गेट दैट फीलिंग बट इट वाज नॉट दैट वे गॉड वाज टेलिंग रन एंड गो टू इन ए वे एंड देयर यू अकॉस्ट पीपल एंड वन ऑन वन टेल देम व्हाट व्हाट टू टेल देम व्हाट वाज सेड दैट ही टोल्ड लेटर ऑन जजमेंट वाज कमिंग नॉट इन पब्लिक बड़ा क्रूसेड दस हजार कुर्सी लगा के माइक पकड़ के बोलने का दैट वॉज नॉट द टाइप ऑफ वर्क दैट गॉड एक्सपेक्टेड वन नॉट वन ओके चैप्टर थ्री वर्स टू अगेन सेम नो वन वर्स टू जैसे ही थ्री वर्स टू दे एंड सेम वर्ड फॉर इज यू ओके गो एंड प्रोक्लेम सेकेंड टाइम एंड गॉड गिव द कॉल ऑफ इज नॉट टेलिंग यू पब्लिक मीटिंग करो ओके Then, uh, then Jonah, verse four also of chapter three. Jonah began by going a day's journey and started proclaiming one on one. Okay, we get all messed up in our brain by thinking we we are not gifted, no? Public preaching. We see 
we have might have seen billy graham we see many other famous tv preachers no bada bada garbi jama karke preach karta hai and hamare paas to utna talent hai nahi utna paisa bhi nahi hai bada bada but who are more powerful itna sermon which people preach to big crowds how many people change and how many people change when jona preached preached by kora means by accosting individuals one on one kitna jan convert hua 120000 that is last chapter tells that was the population at that time of nineve so you know when god has sent you into your office don't ask for a crowd of believers to come there you are enough if you do your job one on one talking to people okay it doesn't mean every city will convert or office will convert the way it did in nineveh but you have to do your job you can't give the excuse that i am not gifted i am not talented you get it so jona ran away when he ran away what happened he went to joppa and he looked for a ship jisme travel kar sakta hai sahi samay mein sahi jagah jidhar jaane ka tha yorop ko hi jana hai na sabko yorop america tabhi bhi waise hi tha jona bhi wohi side gaya kon jayega iraq dil aap mein abhi bomb girta hai sab girta hai ha in those days also the assyrians were there who wants to go there and preach it is more convenient to go to वहां पे कोरा भी करना है तो कर लेगा है ना टू इवेंट एट एट बेस्ट दिस ओबीडियंस बट ही फाउंड अ शिप ही हैड इनफ मनी इन हिस्स पर्स टू पे द फेयर डिवाइनली इट लुक्स ना गॉड इज नाउ चेंज हिज प्लान ऐसे ही लगता है ना हम लोग भी देयर आर इंप्रेशंस दैट कम इन आवर हार्ट टू डू समथिंग then something comes up which is more lucrative okay then we start justifying ye karega to acha hai everything falls in place ship bhi hai seat bhi hai berth bhi mil raha hai ha paisa bhi hai so bhi sakta hai itna acha se ja ke soya ho jo neend usko aata nahi tha jab israel mein tha jab bhi parmeshwar usko bar bar bolta tha go to udhar ja ke neend bhi acha aa gaya lag gaya and a cruise ship but everything going right does not mean god is in it we often conclude sab kuch smooth chal raha hai so god is in it not necessary it was just the calm before the storm baad mein jab bhi toofan aaya to jo na knew what god is who god is Okay. His actions resulted in distress for all his four passengers. And उन लोगों ने कुछ गलती नहीं किया था, but because of him they were also part of the storm. So think about it. If your boss is suffering in his home and then taking it out on you. when you come to office and maybe the boss okay <clears throat> so there are many greats mentioned no nineveh is described in verse 2 as the great city okay then a great wind came in verse 4 a great storm came in verse 12 and a great fear came in verse 16 everything is great okay that's how god works his hand is great okay so if you will not listen to the still small voice that he whispers in your ear and tells you what to do don't listen then he will roar 
through the storms that come in your life. Then you will not miss him. Because there will be no other choice. It is easier to listen to his still small voice than to face the storm. So that's how Juna found out. Okay. So we won't be able to finish. Maybe next time instead of Abraham, we'll continue with Jonah because Jonah has got a lot of interesting things uh, to teach us. So when Jonah was tossed into the sea, a big fish came and dumped him. Okay. So the lessons that We can learn. Chapter 1, the last verse tells, three days and three nights, he was in the belly of the fish. But when you read his prayer, you understand that Jonah was dead. Okay, I'll come to that now. Before we wind up. Okay. Not only was in the belly of the fish, but he was the very words that are used in chapter 2 are very strong words that don't talk about normal circumstances. In the Hebrew, there are some words which are used which indicate life after death. Okay? That part which is called as the neither word or which is called as the abode of the dead. Okay? In those days, people who died did not go to heaven. Even the believers did not go to heaven. That is why in the parable or incident with Jesus narrated about the rich man and Lazarus, they both go down to Hades. But there is a gap, a big valley, which separates the place where Abraham was and those who had trusted God were they were all on one side, being comforted, the Bible says. On the other side, people were suffering, the place where the rich man landed. Okay. After Christ came, a change took place in Hades. He took people from Hades who had put their trust in God's provision and took them with him when he ascended to heaven. Okay. You can read that in Ephesians. He took captives in his train. Till that time, they were also Kaidis, huh? because their sins were not forgiven. They had trusted God, but that act which we remembered here, Jesus actually dying and praying for sins and liberating those captives had not taken place. Okay, When it would take place, they would be free, but at that time, they were not. Okay, So the words which are used here are very indicative that he was not talking about the belly of the fish alone. His body was there anyway. Okay? From deep in the realm of the dead, okay, the word used is Sheol, the abode of the dead. You listen to my cry. Okay? Then, when my life was ebbing away, I remembered you. When Jonah, that is in verse 7, when Jonah was realized when Jonah realized that he was dying and this was it, it was final, he started crying out to God, last minute, like the thief on the cross. Okay? And Jonah says, God heard him. Jonah was a sinner. He did things which were not right, but he was. Verse 6, But you, Lord my God, brought my life up from the pit. The word pit which is used, if you see in Ezekiel, in Isaiah, all these refer to the same place. Okay? Sheol, the, the abode of the dead. So God brought him from the pit. Okay? The place where decay and corruption takes place. Okay? God lifted him from that place. But you, O oh Lord my God, brought my life up 
from the pit that same verse okay up that word up lift up you know the word that is used is ala the aramaic version of the same verse is the word which jesus used for jairus's daughter when she was raised up talita arise you get it god lifted him from the pit that is brought him back from the dead okay in the same way as jairus's daughter you know she was her spirit was not floating around her body at that time she was dead and the same word which jesus used to raise her from the dead is the word that is used here to indicate that jonah was brought back from the dead okay you can do your own study you can choose to disagree with me also no problem okay but this is what i believe and uh, so i have taught it so that is why jesus could use literally it was not symbolic when jesus said that jonah's life was death and is coming back to life was indicating of jesus as death burial and resurrection the jews were not opposing him for what he stated they opposed many other things but this idea that jesus was putting in their mind they didn't oppose they agreed that jonah went to shion and came back they were clear now they were upset about the claim that jesus was doing uh, say uttering that he will actually die and come back to life on his own strength okay i have power to lay it down and raise it up bring it up again that's what he was telling they were against that if he had said god will raise from the dead <laughs> there was no problem about believing that okay so we will end with that with just a thought god hears our prayer no matter where we are no matter how bad we are you know in our own eyes we are bad then we don't pray to god no many times sometimes we don't pray okay but god is not like that we we'll read one verse from chapter 3 verse 9 chapter 3 verse 9 can someone read it who can tell who can tell if god will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not okay who's telling this the ninevites the king is telling to the people sit in sackcloth repent of your evil ways and who knows whether maybe you know he is actually putting it as a maybe god will hame maaf kar dega he will forgive us okay but what they thought as maybe we know as for sure you get it there is no maybe that is how it is their understanding was coming up so they thought maybe but it's not a maybe for an unsaved person fear of there whether god will accept him or not but the word of god says he will accept okay jesus said they were accepted because they will be standing up on the day of judgment and condemning those people who did not accept it okay so another thought whether our officers may people will turn to god think about it he will they will if we share the gospel yesterday when i was uh, we were actually sharing every day we have a bible study with the maid at our home it's made life more interesting for us also okay we look forward to her coming she looks forward to coming okay and uh, the same 
then we share the gospel again every day we do in uh, using some portion from the new testament from the gospels basically okay. she told one thing what use when medicines are there when people will not go to the doctor what do you think she meant she has understood very clearly she was using her own words to tell that dawa hai doctor hai lekin problem hai ki people are not going to the doctor she is telling in the context of the gospel she has understood okay so just to encourage we are shy we fear what people will think but take time to tell little things about god to them those little things are only what is required nothing else god didn't send an angel to nineveh to preach god didn't send nineveh was not visited by angels to share the gospel it was that same guy reluctant uske baad mein bhi when we see him na baith ke dekhta hai kab mare rahe hain log hai na that's a kind of person jona was he was not really keen that they should say okay we land with that because aramodan to leaders in prayer 